Okay, so, great success. Ooh, it's peeking. What's peeking? That's peeking. I have no idea if that's in the right spot yet. I literally just set it up there, but it looks pretty good. Really good. Um, relatively level. Uh, I just have to measure uh, you know, left, right, front, back. Um, with the new wheelbase, I need to make sure this is on center with 110 inches behind the front wheels, give or take a little bit. A lot more room with the fuel cell, moved everything back. And a longer wheelbase means more downforce, more on the floor. So that's super fun of that. So uh, we'll do some measurements and double check stuff. So I did some quick measuring and I have to extend my table or I have to slide the car forward, but 110, 109 and a half inches. <laughs> and that's the back of the table to center of the wheel. So, and if you look, I have to slide the gearbox back some more. Uh, we have some pretty pretty good bending going on with that table. You can kind of see the angle. So I'm going to fix that before we get too much further. That way at least stuff's where I say it is. And we'll uh, kind of get the table sorted, re reinforced a little better. And then, uh, yeah, start connecting dots. Um, I was kind of checking stuff out. This has to go back a little further, which I think makes a, I don't remember, but. It's uh, oh baby, she's tight. So, which is not a huge deal, but um, I can just well that's gonna be on the top side, so that'll help. So we'll have a little more room than I, than it looks like, but um, I may pick the engine up a tiny bit more to help with future plans. But we'll see. And then this this uh, intake manifold can switch around, so we'll have the throttle base coming out the back, and with the new engine cover. We'll have a lot more room back here than the other car, so nice. No it's like I gotta slide back another three, four inches actually to line up center of uh, axles to that. The clevises fit really tight in there. We got luck in that, cause that was my CAD <laughs> and they designed the gearbox off my CAD. So thankfully it fit. Uh, so that's that's awesome news. And they kind of come together, I'm getting getting excited, so. So it's going to be a busy weekend. By the end of this weekend, we're going to have all four wheels connected. Uh, Moton is a little bit behind. I'm still waiting on an ETA when I'm supposed to get the Moton shocks. Um, if it comes down to it, if it's going to be a while, I'm going to have to buy some QA1s or something. I'll still use the Motons, but I, I gotta, I, I can't sit and wait. I mean, I got to build a car. So I think they're, they're affected by COVID and all that. So that's, is what it is. I'm not going to talk bad on them by any means, but sure wish I had the shocks <laughs> to make things easy. I have to finish the front and I got to fabricate the whole back of the car, which is 100% relying on having those shocks. Because uh, where are the rockers? Where are the rockers going to go? Nowhere, because we couldn't put them this far forward. So they got to go basically here. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have the tubing going up there. Drill and tap and see, I guess I'll call this a rose joint. I don't know what they're called. Drill and tap this a little bit. Bolt through those there. And then I'm going to come forward and mount the rocker cups, which if you've seen, uh, I'm kind of the rocker cups, they kind of weld in when they house the bearing there. So, so that gives me some freedom on how to place that. So go from here to here, I'll do another rose joint here, and then I'll connect the tubing in between here. Um, and then, yeah, there'll be some reinforcement and all that. So it should be a pretty lightweight thing. I mean, less than, less than 10 pounds to mount the rocker. So that'd be cool. Um, and then third element's gonna come off the back. You can see here where's the where winching on it. Uh, it's basically gonna be tied into this on the bottom. So we have the, the rocker bar here, third element. I'm gonna try to have bolt right to the top of this crossbar. That'd be sick. So yeah, that's, that's that. So from here we uh, reinforce table and get to work. A few moments later. All right, so we got uh, Brian and I have been jamming. Nice. Uh, Brian's must have been jamming. I've been walking around uh, brainstorming. So we lengthened the cart. We're gonna plate the top of that. We have a reinforcement underneath. Holds it all real nice. Uh, the engine seems to be in a really good spot. Uh, a little bit of room for the diffuser. I like it, it's up pretty good. Gives a little bit of room. You know, it's wild. We can pull that oil pan without 
I think we can pull it open without uh, dropping the whole thing. Probably. Because the whole thing is now behind. Yeah, yeah. we can. Oh, also, I put the other throttle body on for effect. I have no idea if we're gonna be running twins, but uh, hold hold up that shorter tube, and then kind of about there. So, oh, move your finger. There you go. So <laughs> there we go. That's nice and tight, but tolerance is tolerance. If we have to pull the valve cover off, we'll just pull this whole brace off. But uh, then, as far as that goes, that's gonna be a pretty simple. Uh, Pretty simple silicone 90 if we need it. Or or hard 90, whatever. I might be able to do a, one of those aluminum uh, donuts. Moving it backwards, it's too wide. Actually, that's not bad at all. We could almost do a full full radius orange on that. Nice and smooth back to the turbos. Mm -hmm. Go get the turbo on the bench. <laughs> Brian gets excited I, for turbos. I don't know if I can pick that up. It's too big. It's, uh, Excuse my language. Yeah, well, wait till we try to mock up two of them right now. <laughs> yeah, this is the fun stuff. So uh, next, yeah, everything's pretty good. I mean, we gotta really do fine tweak measurements, but it's it's chilling pretty pretty good right there. I seem like there's about 17 inches here. Rough, I just got that chilling on the end of the crank. Um, fuel cells, to 12 inches on the bottom, so you got plenty of room. Water to intercooler. Uh, I'll take that apart and show you guys. It's super awesome. Billet blocks. They have uh, twin feeds on the front of the blocks, so. If we don't end up going right with a billet out right off the bat, we'll have to convert to electric pumps. I'll probably use some Davies Craig pumps. Boom. Voila. Let me get a rag. You want to do a home workout with this thing? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a toddler workout. <laughs> so just kind of just set it right there. Uh, compressor forward. That's big. <laughs> that is one matey boy. That's big. So I'll put this down. Division, because the, the car is still, like the, the new engine cover is pretty tall right here. Kind of envisioned having it. Um, uh, it's going to be fun. Twins will be easy, won't it? Kind of about like that. Um, I might be a little further back. So then you've got. We would have to do a crossover pipe from that header over to this side, like a Y in. This would be this, and then obviously exhaust for the back. But I think it'd be quite a bit taller. Um, yeah, I think it'd be taller. And then, the, then the intake goes up to the. That's good. This is probably too tall, but. Yeah, it's too tall. It's about half that. Go ahead and take it off. You can set it on that if you want. Oh, I got it. Never fear, we're only one block away from having a perfect fit. So, yep, that's that's it right there. So I think that'll fit. I'm gonna have to get a little tighter forward. Side turbo forward. Yeah, and then this. Yeah, we room for a crossover. Um it's gonna get real tight around the shocks though on this side. Yeah, there goes the shock. Shocks will be right here. So I might have to go down one. So we'll go look up. And then yeah, so that's kind of it right there, I think. Roughly. Um I'm gonna try to get Garrett to go larger, do a do a large frame, like a 55. And that will work. So gosh, another thought. Bring it up here, Brian. We want to get real silly. Yeah. He's going to die. Oh, we got to do it with the exhaust. Never mind. Too much work. Yeah, I like that. So we could even go, go further forward. Not quite. So picture like a nice smooth 45. Cause Something like that. Uh, slide it back a little. Actually, set it down. I think that's probably it right there. Because... This comes down real nice here. We could do a crossover. Come down here to collector, whatever. And then that that's easy. We can do whatever with that. Yep. If we do, um, maybe we'll end up doing a single with just one throttle body like that. Uh, we'll, we'll get it, we'll do a nice bend off of it, do it lower and boom, right in. Yep, this comes out the back. The third element's gonna mount probably right here. So we're obviously, <laughs> we're gonna have a heat shield right here. 
and the exhaust is going to come right out the back right above right below the rear wing yeah it was somewhat somewhat diffuser pumped we'll see um so tomorrow we mount that to the chassis ryan's already got all those welded up over there so can start cutting and notching and grinding uh, i should probably stop at menards in the morning get a bunch of flap discs and three eighths yeah we need some flap discs so do that on that so my goal is to have the chassis like kind of tacked in tomorrow if not welded um and then we, uh, by the end of the weekend i want i want the wheels connected so we'll, we'll finish this get the wheels on there just double triple check uh what i usually do is i build one side and then i build a fixture like uh, the flat plate i think we can use that too uh it might even work to where this is the same width as the other stuff it might even drop in the same jigs so so we'll get one side tapped we'll do fixture and then we can build the other side that'll be aero tubing back here as well oh doggy so that's it for tonight day two another beautiful day got right into it built these brian's fitting that side <laughs> I'm cutting this one. Uh, I'll be cutting that one. I'll be cutting those sides too. So uh, I think with the both of us jamming this out, we'll have this done a little after lunch, hopefully. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, start on suspension. Tolerance is tolerance. Yep, I'm excited about it. Welded. We can reach here. What? And we're on the last major chassis tubes. When I say we, I mean Brian, because I'm working on suspension stuff since we're getting there. So he's connecting that, which is going to tie in the rest of the chassis. I thought it would take a lot longer, but I guess when you got two guys working on something, it goes quick. So uh, it sucks we had to redo it, but we had to lengthen it by, oh, I don't know, 10 inches or something. So. To call Brian, it's going to be quite the unit when we get it on the ground. <laughs> Absolute unit. <laughs> I am working on... Oh, got an upright, right? Well, kind of ready. I mean, enough to deal, enough to get it uh, kind of mounted or whatever. So it's going to work in my favor because... Uh, I used the wrong bolt right there. So, but it works because it's locked, which means the upright won't spin on the wheel. So we can kind of chock the wheel and it'll stay where it needs to. So I can freehand the suspension. We'll set the wheel up according to CAD and connect the dots, literally. So what I'm doing now is building a new uh, new tube end for that. When I say it's kind of a tube end. Um, they're just solid blanks which are very similar to what we did on the front, which are right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so that's the threaded insert. So build nose for the rear uppers. The rear lowers are easy. It's gonna look pretty, I don't know, just like this. So onward and upward. A few moments later. Pretty much all the chassis tubes are fitted. Gotta do final welding, but. Oh, it looks good. Oh, and what's that? Getting ready for wheels. And what do you got, Brian? Got the last piece of chassis over here. What that dang, dude? She toy. So that's the last chassis piece over there. So, four main chassis points here, here, and here. Uh, we still have the front of the engine kind of propped up on supports. I will be doing some sort of engine mount uh, set up there. One of our uh, F1 members, who's Lamont's experience and all that, he's like, uh, do you have a way to account for engine expansion when it warms up? And I'm like, no, we didn't worry about it, but I guess we'll do it. Why not? So I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a system to where the engine will be supported uh, every direction, but it'll still allow the engine to grow that way because that's the way it's gonna move when it gets warm. Otherwise, back here, it's, it's all free to do whatever. But that way, the chassis doesn't restrain the engine and cause issues or whatever. And I don't think it would in this case. I don't think the chassis is stiff enough, but you never know, I guess. So, yeah, so we're doing a way to um, 
we'll be building a, a way to do that. Uh, we'll, we'll use some shims uh, to keep it tight when it's cold and let it grow. So, what are you stroking over there, bud? Myself. I, th I, think, I think we caught him doing something. Anyway, uh, oh. so I like to scrape off all the, all the uh, what do they call it? So, well, mill scale? Mill scale. Mill scale. Yep. So, uh, so next, next up is going to be. Uh, Let's get the wheel in the upright over here. Uh, looks like tonight I'm gonna have uh, A-arms hanging. Woohoo! And then tomorrow we fixture the A-arms and then build the other side, weld them all. And if we had suspension, Monday this would be rollable, like legit rollable and steerable, but we don't have suspension. And it's another beautiful minute. Uh, so all kinds of stuff going on. I built the lower control arms. You guys have seen that on the front suspension episodes. So uh, what I'm doing is figuring out where the push rod is going to go, uh, which is going to go up to the rocker. The rocker is going to go somewhere here and uh, shock somewhere up there. I'll figure all that out soon. Uh, the Repu has my only mock-up shocks on it, so I'm going to have to go get that tomorrow, get, or get, the, get the shocks at least tomorrow. Uh, but basically, from what I see, we have clearance on that, and this is just a dummy axle. I mean, the axle's great, it just won't fit the transmission. So, uh, we've got clearance clearance on the axle, barely. And then we've got clearance on, uh, on that control arm right there. And as this goes up, clearance increases. And the team wanted me to do, um, they wanted me to do the tow link at the back, so it's under tension instead of compression under braking. So. That's why I'm doing it differently. Normally I would go there to there. And that would be that and the tow link would go in the front, but I guess it's six to one half dozen the other and that's, they want it, so I guess I do it. So finish mocking these up and then it's gonna wrap up the day. I just wanted to get the control arms roughed in, if you will. Tomorrow we we'll do all the jigging. So I had about a 12 hour day into this. Brian, when did you get here? 11, 10.30? 10.30? You went and got stuff. Yeah. So in that 12 hours, but times two, call it, I don't know, 20 hours of labor. We got the engine connected, transmission connected, control arms fabricated. I still have to do the tow link, but that's easy. Still have to go through weld and gusset and... We absolutely jammed out today. Yeah, so... Uh, holy crap, there's a freaking car. Look at this. All right, Brian, pull that thing back a little bit. Grab the, this see if, way? just straight back. See if we can get it to come back. All right. Ooh, the GoPro would be nice for this because I get out of the shot. I'm trying to get a whole side shot. No, you get out of the shot. <laughs> car! That looks awesome. I'm gonna post that picture right about now. Um, yeah, so good freaking day, sir. It just seems really long. But I don't know, the F1s said they wanted it, so the F1s get it. So we'll check in tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go blow up social media with us a little bit. I think you're uh, kind of used to shorter things too, so. Rip.